coming inside 18 minutes tonight. Meanwhile, City are, are poised to make Raheem Sterling the most uh, wealthy English footballer. He is set to sign a new five-year deal at the Etihad worth £300,000 a week. Meanwhile, FAI Chief Executive John Delaney says Brexit will have no impact on a joint bid to host the 2023 under 21 European Championships. The FAI and IFA have combined resources to put together a bid to host the tournament. Formal submission of the bid to UEFA will come next year, with a decision expected in 2020, by which time the full effects of Brexit should be known. But Delaney says it will have no effect on either the bid or the final awarding of the tournament. As you will have heard with Eddie there, both Will Addison and Ross Byrne will likely earn their first Ireland caps off the bench in Saturday's test with Italy in Chicago. Reese Ruddock captains a youthful side and is joined in the back row by Leinster teammates Josh Van de Fleer and number eight Jack Conan. Quinn Rue partners the first starter, Ty Byrne, in the second row, while hooker Niall Scannell is joined in the front row by Leinster props Jack McGrath and Andrew Porter. Jordan Larmer makes a first start at full back with Andrew Conway and Jacob Stockdale manning the wings. Gary Ringrose is partnered by Bundyaki in the centre. And in the absence of both Conor Murray and Jonathan Sexton, the three quarters is formed by Luke McGrath and Joey Carberry. Meanwhile, Kevin Martin's been ratified for another year in charge of the Offaly Hurlers. Martin led the face faithful to an Allianz League quarter-final this year, but having lost all four of their Leinster round robin games, they were relegated to next year's Joe McDonough Cup. Ex-Tipperary wing-back Declan Fanning joins Martin's coaching ticket for 2019, while Kevin O'Donovan was tonight confirmed as the new Cork County Board Secretary. He succeeds Frank Murphy, who will retire at the county convention in December, having occupied the job for 45 years. O'Donovan hails from the Kilmeen Kilbree Club in West Cork and was last year elected Vice Chairman of the Cork County Board. Board. Still, Manchester City won Fulham nil. It's time for the football show. The football show on Off the Ball. Brought to you by Boyle Sports. Proud supporters of Responsible Gambling Week. Visit responsiblegamblingweek.org for details on who to contact if you or a friend need help or advice. I'm prepared to edit and I can't. Well, do, it then. Again. do it then. What about your start to the game? I was, it wasn't bad, was it? <laughs> Why should be an honest answer be a mistake? How can a modern day manager not have a mobile phone? Why should he? <laughs> so here we are, Ken Coban, another football show. Yeah. What's the, what's the story then, Joe? You got any news for me? You always, you always have some something for me somewhere along the line. I've got a few bits and bobs. Have you? Yeah. You're going to hit me with something tonight, something of uh, real importance. I'm going to hit you with something. Are you working over the weekend? Uh, Saturday. Saturday, yeah. I'm only in studio. In studio, the BBC. Final score. Yeah. Yes. I'm going to hit you with some bits that you're going to end up using. Oh, yeah? Recycling on the <laughs> score. Yeah. So we'll talk a little bit about a few bits and bobs going on, and we'll also bring you a decent-sized chunk of Keith Andrews speaking to Keith Tracy on the Keith Andrews Show today. A really good chat. Keith yeah. Tracy, very open about his mental health. So that is on good the play, way. Keith. Yeah. Very good player he was, Joe. Um, it, probably one of those players as well that, b because we haven't necessarily seen a lot of him playing in an Irish jersey or in, really in the top flight football, but mm. tremendous natural ability, you know, lovely left foot, brilliant left foot, in fact. And it just one of those one of those things where it, that, that happens in football and in life, just wasn't necessarily able to um, to fulfil his potential, really. Yeah, it's sad, really. He talks to Keith today, so we'll bring you that later on in a few moments' time. Things which are grabbing attention. Neil Lennon. Neil yeah. Lennon. Yeah. Did, 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 I mean, did the other one thing around this game is still, it's still something that even strikes me now when, of course, we think of the old firm, um, we think of Celtic Rangers and we think of big derbies over, over in, in Britain, I suppose, as well. We think of United, Liverpool, and as, as much a derby, but certainly a, a huge game within two cities. But City, United, Liverpool, Everton, Merseyside derby, North London derby. But this Edinburgh derby, it, over the last couple of years, it's starting to really come to... The four now, I suppose, and it's starting. People are starting to seriously talk about it. It's something that would have bypassed me to an extent. Yeah. Um, but it's starting to get a little bit more aggro at this match now. So the game finished nil all, and what happened in the final few moments? I'm sure you've seen it at this stage. So there was a goal scored and then disallowed, and Lennon turned around as if to say to all the crowd, "Sit down, sit down. Not a goal. Still nil all, kind of thing." And. He was kind of smiling and gesturing at them. Yeah. And then Coyne comes and whacks him in the jaw and Lennon hits the deck fairly quickly. My jaw is throbbing. I'm very, very angry. I'm fizzing. <laughs> <laughs> it's I've, disgraceful. I've fizzing is fizzing. the ultimate. That's code red. Yeah, I've seen him fizzing as well. I'd say so. So I'm fizzing. It's disgraceful. I don't blame the club. You can't legislate for what hatred of some individuals or the badness. Um, what possesses people to throw things on a football pitch, I will never know. He said, I'd like to meet the individual who threw the coin because I'm not happy. What would you say to him, they asked. 
that's not for public consumption, trust me. I don't know if I would say anything to him. And then the Hearts goalkeeper as well seemed to be struck by a fan when he was trying to get the ball back. Yeah. He was being hit with missiles as well and then a fan sort of half struck him and he hit the deck as well. Lennon was saying it's blackening the name of both clubs and Scottish football. This should be a showpiece game. It was feisty, intimidating, everything you expect. But if people can't behave themselves then they should be banned, singled out, embarrassed and humiliated because they have humiliated the club. And it, I think it was put to Lennon, did you play your part? You know, was it the best thing to do to yeah. turn around and gesture to them? And he was having none of that. He said it was a really light-hearted the whole game there was no malice, bit of banter between me and a couple of fans. Obviously, there was some heavy stuff as well, but nothing over the top. So where that came from, the coin throwing, I don't know. Uh, their mode of thinking will be, well, Lennon brings it on himself. Sorry, that does not wash, and that's why I'm angry, and it could have been a lot worse. I yeah. guess that's the ultimate point. Yeah, I, I don't know where, where, where you stand on it. It's, it's a strange one, isn't it? You know, when we saw, in the last few weeks, we've seen serious trouble at GAA matches. We've saw, Of course, we saw the trouble down, down in Kerry, was it last week, wasn't it? And... There's not a lot said around it, isn't it? These big sporting events. Yet, these th this supporter of his found they probably get a, a lifetime ban. Oh, yeah. A lifetime ban. Mm. Um, we'll see. I, I remember Chris Kirkland a few years ago now as well. But I think he was playing for Sheffield Wednesday at the time, and the supporter came onto the pitch, basically give him um, give him a right hook. Mm. Um, and it's we we'll thinking they're quite rightly a lifetime ban. Is a lifetime ban maybe a little harsh for, for a coin throw? Where, I don't know, where do you put it? I don't know. Well, if it takes his eye out, then it's... Yeah, that's the thing. It's the damage that it could do, isn't it? Yeah. Some, some individual that's probably had one too many to drink and decides then that he can throw a coin at, at someone. Yeah, I, it, it, it probably is right because of the damage that could be done. That's the thing. Um, See, I agree with him and disagree with him. I agree with him that ultimately it's unacceptable and it shouldn't have happened. Yeah. But when he says, I played no part in this, I kind of disagree. I just don't think it's the best thing to do at that moment. Yeah, but do you not... In a perfect world, it's fine. Yeah. And I... ultimately, I'm still saying Neil Lennon is 100% the victim here. Yeah. 100% the victim here. Well, I think... And yet, if you turn to a mob like that, mob, yeah. mob maybe is the wrong word, but at that exact moment, they thought they've won the derby, mm. it's just been disallowed, and he's given it the old, ooh, sit down, sit down, sit down. Is it unbelievable that one idiot reacted no, it's not. No, it's not. There's, 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 there's an element of me with you here that will say, yeah, you're probably right in what you're saying. Heat of the moment stuff. Mm. The coach at Chelsea last week running past Mourinho. If I'm Mourinho, I'm getting up and looking to, to give him a right hook at that stage. And all of a sudden, Mourinho then, Mourinho's getting... He's getting a bit of stick, really, for reacting to it. I thought Mourinho did nothing wrong with that. This is a bit different. I, if, if you stood on the touchline, I mean, you know, whenever I, I've played a lot of my time as a winger, as a fullback, or whatever it would be, the amount of stick you'd hear from the touchline coming your way constantly, um, various things thrown at you, whether that would be my hair, which has been a constant mock, even <laughs> saying I've got, I've got a great hairstyle. As you, as What's you know. wrong with your hair? <laughs> it's terrible, as you know. Um, Was but, your hair always terrible? Ah. Oh, I've just he's just flat in it. It's just it's got no life, has no it? Volume. It's got nothing, has it? It's got, it's got condition it or do anything with it, no. I shall I try something. Put a bit of volume in that. I thing. should try and put a bit of gel in it sometimes. I just yeah, can't, can't. I, I can't do anything with it. I never thought you had an issue with your hair at all, to be honest. I don't have an issue with it myself. It was, it was thought it was long and flowing. It suited your style of play running down the wing. Yeah, well that's why I, I've been called many things for it anyway. Some of them well most of them aren't too pleasant. Someone's doing a close up of your hair there. <laughs> That's just not fair. <laughs> oh, it's shocking, isn't it? It's terrible. <laughs> it is terrible. Do you, I never knew you had an issue with your hair. Do I've you know, not like, got an issue with it, but I'm just, it's just me. I'm, I can't change it. It's just, ugh, it's just flat, isn't it? Well, why don't you do something with it? Does it need to be shorter or longer here? It needs, it needs a cut, yeah. It does need a cut. Well, what if you grew it out a bit more? Nah, Stephen Hunt style. A oh, hunty, yeah. No, I couldn't carry off a hunty. Because it's shorter than... Well, hunty was dyeing his hair from the, from the age of 20. I, 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 I could never see myself dyeing my hair, to be honest with you, Joe. I wouldn't even be asked with that, but... Um, it was longer in your playing days. Yeah, probably. I've had, it, I've had it all different lengths. Yeah. The thing is, my hair it just does the same thing. Unless I put a little bit of gel in it to try to, or a bit of wax or something in it, it's just, it's. Ah. Why don't you do that then? I do some, most of the time I do, but today I just didn't, didn't have the time to. Show me when it was good. Uh, no, I never said it's good. Okay. I never said it's good when I put wax in, but it just makes it. Less just, awful. It just, I kind of just lets it, I don't know, it just makes it stick in the same place, whereas now it's just all over the guy. I think it's just, it's a bit in between stools for me. It's a bit long at the sides as well, I think. That's uh, what's killing you. Look, it's a bit... Oh, I don't like saying this. It's a bit like um, a bowl over the head that your mum's done. <laughs> that's, what, that's what's normally said to me, actually, yeah. That is what... It does have that feel. <laughs> it's a DIY job. I have cut my hair in the past myself. I've cut me on hair. Ah, for God's sake. Honestly, I have. As a Premier League footballer? Ah, it's just... Who cares? 
Who really cares, Joe? Well, if I was getting, if I was playing on the wing and had people commenting on my hair all the time, or a, a it wasn't bit. all the time. It was on Every occasions, game, nonstop. On occasions, <laughs> I, I, the, 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 the throwaway comment to me was my hair. Yeah. Then but I would probably just go and pay the ten. Where are we going to from this? We're talking about Neil Lennon being struck by a coin. I brought up that I've had a bit of stick sometimes from your hair, and you, we've gone on a five-minute rant over it, you know. It's just... Um, I are we no putting this in the same ballpark? <laughs> <laughs> Neil Lennon no. getting struck by a coin. No, we're not, we're not, we're not, we're not. Neil Lennon didn't deserve it, you did, that's what we're saying. Yeah, that's probably true. That is very true. I'd probably go with you on that. I wouldn't disagree with that. Can we get some suggestions in for what you might do with your hair? And then we might just experiment and try and find... What I might do with my yeah, hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See what people think. We might find a solution. Yeah. I see, I just, it's just a bit too long to be short, but it's not long enough to be long. Right, like, it's yeah. just really in between stools there. Right, I'm going to have to get it cut this week. It weekend. doesn't know what it's trying to do. I'm going to have to get it cut then, Anna, this week. I haven't got the time to get it cut this weekend as well, so tomorrow, tomorrow I'll be able to get it cut, actually, yeah. There you go. So I'll be able to get it cut tomorrow. Yeah, I'll, tomorrow I'll go well. and, uh, yeah, just have a trim up. And do you find it looks worse in real life or on TV? Oh, let's not talk about that. I just, I just one last question Some, on it. Sometimes, or a majority of the time, I do look at myself on TV and I think, oh, I should... Just needs a tightening. Joe, I can't do anything. I, seriously, unless I, when it's it grows, pretty, pretty it's just though. it's just terrible. That's the thing. I, I would just get it trimmed a bit. I mean, that, look, that was me at twenty. It's not changed. See, listeners, we've just put up a picture of him in his West Brom kit at twenty, and it's much better. It's the it's, same. No, it's it's longer. Is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I just think at the moment it's scruffy looking, whereas in that picture it's it's a bit more knowing what it is. It's it's deliberately long. That's just someone who hasn't had a haircut in six weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas the other one is you going, well, my hair is long. Right. That's the key difference. I'm ready to move on if you want to. Yeah. Do you want to have a final final thoughts on your hair? No, I don't. Let's t final thoughts on Neil Lennon? Uh, I mean, it's a pity. I mean, it's going to happen. I don't... Well, if it becomes a trend, we can talk about it again. Yeah. I, no, but what I'm saying is, the only thing I'm saying with Neil, with Neil Lennon there is, if he's getting stick and a little bit... He, he's quite... I personally, I think he's quite entitled to turn around and just, ah, oh, lads, give him a bit of stick, calm down. In a perfect world, yeah. 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 I just yeah, think yeah. we scrutinise every, every manager for something that's done in the heat of the moment when in those moments at times, whether it's a player on the pitch or a player or a manager or a coach that's off it, you lose your head and you, you, it's, sure. and you look back and you think, why the hell have I done that? No, I can totally appreciate that. You definitely don't deserve, deserve a coin in the face for doing that so um, we'll get to Arsenal-Liverpool which is this weekend's biggest game I think half past five on Saturday at the Emirates but Wayne Rooney yeah. has been given various interviews so I mean Rooney to DC United has been a huge success I hadn't fully appreciated just what a success he has been mm. they were going nowhere and he has basically prompted one of the great mid-season turnarounds in MLS history. So the team have gone from being the dregs of the MLS to now clinching a playoff spot in the final week of the season. So in 19 appearances, because <coughs> I think everyone's familiar with the Rooney chase back and tackle and the yeah. assist. That against Orlando, wasn't it? It was brilliant, wasn't it? Amazing. Uh, who knows who it was against? Kevin against Orlando, Joe, it was. Okay. I remember because it stuck to my mind because it was the Orlando were up towards the back end of that match. It stuck in my mind, yeah. Yeah. Who could forget Orlando? Well, because, do you know why it is, why that is stuck in my mind? That's, it's the truth. Um, James O'Connor, who used to play for Ireland the 21s at Stoke, and Irish under, underage international, he's the manager of Orlando. That's oh, why is it's he? in my head, yeah. Oh, we should get him on. Yeah. I didn't realise that. So, 19 appearances for Wayne Rooney, 12 goals and 9 assists in 19 games. It's a games. great return, isn't it, from he's him, fantastic. really? 33 years old. So he's done an interview talking about various bits and bobs. I knew it was a tough league, a physical league, but I think the ability of teams in the league and the ability of individual players is a lot higher than I thought it was going to be. And he's talking about being able to go out and get a coffee. Mm. And just what a nice thing that is for him. Yeah. I guess he's had pretty much over half his life. 16, ever, ever since I've known him. Yeah, it's over half his life. Yeah. 16 was when he scored against Arsenal. So now he's 33. So for over half his life. He's just talking about the spontaneity that yeah. life gives him now. So before you'd have to really plan things out, maybe phone ahead, go organise go on, things. Go with the kids to the park, yeah. anything like that. He was saying we can now decide at the spur of the moment, let's go get a coffee and go for a walk. Yeah. And he's saying it's lovely. It must be. I know, I know. I said, I, every, you know, when I joined Everton, Wayne was 17, 16? 16. He was 16, I think, when I joined Everton. Oh, when you joined, sorry. Yeah, when I joined. So, yeah, 16, 17 anyway. And when I joined, he was the name on everybody's lips. He was the only player... Even you really would have thought, and he probably was to an extent the only player that we had at the club. Certainly the 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 marquee the marquee player then, even at, a, at such a young age, everybody knew about him. I knew about him from probably when he was about twelve or thirteen. I, even I was hearing about him up at Sunderland and yeah. at West Brom whenever I was. So he he was certainly 
a player that's been on everyone's mind within the game, certainly initially, and then certainly around the game from such a young age. So, yeah, he's, he's had so much scrutiny in his life. I can imagine for him, I had a chance to go to uh, San Jose uh, towards the back end of my career. Um, it, it never happened, one, one, way, one reason or another, but to play out the... For him, for, for me, it would be totally different for him. He need, he, I think he's needed to go out there just to get away from things, to be able to live his life, essentially. Yeah. Live his adult life. He's not been able to live his adult life, and I think, I think he'll see a different person to, in himself probably in the next year or two. Or if he does and he's made a few mistakes, then it's everywhere. Yeah. I mean, wasn't it a year ago that <clears> thing <throat> blew up and he was in the papers again? Yeah. It, was, it was just a mess, so I'd say he's delighted to get out of there. He's the captain. He's the DJ as well. I put on the music... It's all a bit of James Bay, Ed Sheeran and Mumford and Sons. Yeah, he's, he, uh, his, his musical taste was always really poor, I have to say that. Because he had a Stereophonics tattoo. Yeah. Or, I mean, he, when he was coming through Stereophonics... Uh, what education, what was the one? Jeep. No. Just the, Enough Education Just to Enough perform. Education to Perform, that one was their it, albums. Yeah, the albums, yeah. That the was one it. after um, Something in Cocktails. What was their big album? Yeah, a good album, actually. Performance and Cocktails? Mm. I think it was Performance and Cocktails. Was it? It's yeah. good knowledge, Joe. And then they followed that up with Jeep, which was a poor album but he got that tattoo, Just Enough Education to Perform, <laughs> which was a shocking decision. <laughs> like, I knew the kid was going to make mistakes when I saw that. That's when I knew this won't run smooth. Was he at Man United at the time, then? Did he sign for United? Yeah, Probably yeah, had. Yeah, no, he's Probably around there. Had. But I just oh. thought, you know, he's going to fall into some traps. Yeah. Including Just Enough Education to Perform <laughs> tattooed on his arse or whatever it is, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'll tell you what, though, I did like. He was uh, doing an interview with Men in Blazers, the TV show over there. And he was talking about when he first signed with DC United. And he said, as part of the deal, they were going to offer him first class flights and first class travel and private hotel rooms for away room, for away games. Obviously, the other players aren't getting that. And he said, no, 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 I'm not doing any of that. So he travels whatever way the team are traveling, on a bus sometimes, or <laughs> yeah. back at the plane. He's there and he's sharing a room. He says, it's not rocket science. If you go uh, somewhere and form relationships with the players and speak to them, things will be better. I know a lot of players who come over here, big players in other countries, they haven't attempted to form those relationships or buy into what the team are doing. I think it's very important you do that and you can have a big impact on the team. So it's great. He's gone there for the right reasons, really, and doing yeah. it the right way. And 19 appearances, 12 goals, 9 assists, and he's dragged them into the playoffs. It's very impressive, yeah, really. Yeah, it, it is great. It's, it, as long as I've known him as well, he, he was always that player that... He, he loved the social side of being a footballer. Not, I'm not talking uh, uh, like away from the game, the social the dressing, side. Room. I took dressing room. Dressing yeah. room. On the bus going to and from games. And I think back into my career, the, even though sometimes we had some horrendous journeys going to games, uh, stuck on motorways and things like this, yeah. it was such a buzz. You probably look back on them fondly. Oh, the, it's such a buzz. And that was, that was where Wayne came into his own. He right. was, even, as, even as a kid, he was, he was a typical scouser. You know, he was one, a lad that wanted to be part of everything. Great, great kid, great laugh. And um, that, that's the thing that sticks in your mind with him, really. That's the thing that sticks in my mind. And I, I, his lifestyle has had to change as he's got older, as he's had kids, and he's had to shy away from, uh, certainly from public life in a way. Yeah. But the way that he was, I'm certain in, in, in myself now that he wouldn't have changed his, uh, his mindset to yeah. life and to training in general. Still only 33. Yeah. Wayne Rooney. Yeah. I mean, he's definitely a bit old before his time. Yeah. I, I just think his physique at such a young age, he, he was a man at 15, Joe, no. 16, wasn't he? So he, he, he was know. always going to have a yeah. shorter shelf life, I think, than the gigs who'd no weight in them. Yeah, that's it. It's interesting what he was saying about England as well, watching them during the World Cup. So I thought he was going to say something like, it was a bit tough to watch them. Because he starts by saying, the last time I watched England and wasn't part of it all was when I was 16 or 17. Yeah. So I thought he was going to say, it's pretty difficult. I was sat on my couch a million miles away and yeah. this was all happening. And instead, he said, it was great to just chill out and watch the games. Yeah. Like the pressure. I guess yeah. he's had that for such a long time. So I didn't get the sense he missed the England pressure and the England hype necessarily. He's, because he's had pretty un unenjoyable tournaments. Yeah. It is amazing that really. You, uh, and I've, I, I do have total empathy with him on that one. It is. It's, you, know, you live your whole life wanting to be a professional footballer and you dream of those big nights playing for your country and playing in World Cups, all these sort of things. And sometimes it's nice just to step back from it. Really, and just yeah. think It is. You miss it. Well, I certainly would miss it now when I'm going to games. But for when you, the scrutiny that's been on him yeah. from such a young age, particularly internationally, the, the, the hopes of England as a nation in every tournament has fairly much rested on his shoulders, True. hasn't it? And the worst thing he did was blow everyone out of the water at Euro 2004 and yeah. they thought, well, do that again. Yeah, it's exactly. It's going to be very difficult. I know, um, it is. So that's Rooney. I think the MLS 
postseason starts next week. Arsenal, Liverpool, Emirates, Saturday, half past five. Liverpool, eight wins this season. Arsenal, seven wins this season. We've got our Arsenal back and all that business. Paul Merson. Paul Merson, Kev, was asked about Arsenal, the new Arsenal. Yeah. And he is not impressed. He says, Arsenal's defending hasn't changed one bit since Arsenal Wenger left. And he does not think Arsenal will get a Champions League place. He's not impressed. He's not buying into the hype at all. My big stat for you on the defending point. So, well, is Merson just basing this on what he's seeing? Or is he looking yeah. at the stats? Or what's he thinking? So, Arsenal, in their 10 Premier League games thus far have shipped 141 shots in 10 games. So only Burnley, Brighton, Fulham, Newcastle and West Ham have faced more. Yeah. So if you take Arsenal's 141 shots in a game, or across the 10 games, compared to just 80 for Liverpool, Manchester City just 59 shots, and Arsenal are at 141. Yeah. So Merson sense that actually the defending is still a bit away from being perfect mm. is, is maybe quite right. And... If you're giving up, what, 141 shots, 10 Premier League games, 14 on average, you've got to think Liverpool will create at least 16 to 18 shots there. You can't really give up 16 to 18 shots to Liverpool. Yeah, I, I, we, I think I'm, prob- I'm thinking exactly the same thing. And you can use that on final score. Can I? No problem. Can I use that? Yeah. Can I quote you? Don't quote me personally. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, you, I, I heard you talking about the day, you know, City and Chelsea losing those first two games of the season, and then... Y- Whenever you've seen them on this run that they've been on, of course, you had drawn against Palace uh, last weekend, but watching the Leicester game in particular, uh, was that last a week, a week Monday yeah. ago? And the goal down and the came back. The amount of chances that they were conceding in that first half, and they should have had a penalty, Leicester as well. Mm. Slack defending. Most of the chances that they're conceding, it's not necessarily from poor defending, it's actually from poor attacking play, if you know what I mean, giving the ball away, because they're trying to build from the back, so they're trying to actually look for, for thready passes from. A, a, a real defensive area so it might be one of the centre halves that's on the ball mm. and they're trying to thread a ball through to a central area it's a bit tight you know taking a, making a risky pass and sides like Leicester thrive that's Leicester's game all day long isn't it so that's where the chances seem to be coming from when I've been watching them but up front when they had it off in the last 25-30 minutes of that game against Leicester it's as good a football as you're ever likely to see yeah, you, you can't, you're just watching it you're just mesmerised thinking why can't it be like this the whole time mm. so you it might be building towards a future of them being a bit more stable defensively, which I, I don't necessarily see with who they've got in there. Xhaka playing at left back, Xhaka playing left back. I mean, you, you can see it in your head. Yeah. The amount of fouls he can see is too rash. Yeah, he is yeah. given the penalty away last week, and he's not a defender. So that's a, probably a way for him to get Xhaka in the side. That's the way I would see it for Unai Emery. But I think in general, they they aren't a side that would fill me with confidence defensively at all. No, so. I'm not necessarily on the same wavelength as as, as, as Merson, but I'm somewhere near it. I'm not yeah. necessarily with him. Not convinced him. yet. No, I'm either. not convinced. Yeah. I'm not convinced that they are they are going to be consistently playing the way that they're playing now and finishing the top four. This is their toughest game in some time. It's at the Emirates, so it'll be really interesting. I think it and suits them. But I think it suits Liverpool being at the Emirates. Do you hit That's them? the way that I think about yeah. it. I think okay. Liverpool will win this. Okay, that's at half five on Saturday. So. We're taking a short break, and next up we're going to bring you Keith Andrews having a really brilliant conversation with former Preston and Burnley and Irish player Keith Tracy. That's on the way next. Football on Off The Ball. Brought to you by Boyle Sports. Proud supporters of Responsible Gambling Week. Visit responsiblegamblingweek.org for details on who to contact if you or a friend need help or advice. There's only one phrase that comes to mind when you first see the all-new Lexus ES bold elegance. The phrase perfectly captures what this luxury saloon represents. Brave design meets supreme comfort, powered by our self-charging hybrid and enhanced by cutting-edge Lexus Safety System Plus, making the ES ready for the future. You see? Bold elegance. Preview the all-new ES at Lexus.ie or your Lexus retailer. Lexus. Experience amazing. You hear that? That's time going by. Time you've probably spent worrying about the future for your business. But did you know you still have time to get an internationally recognized seal of approval for your company? NSAI can help put your business at a more competitive advantage that could increase your market share, create a better overall perception of your company, and build higher demand for your product. Visit nsai.ie to get your business on track to internationally recognized certification today. You thought it was a one-day deal. A week at most. But you were wrong. 
The Black Friday event is now on at AppliancesDelivered.ie and the savings are epic. TVs from just $99.95, up to 40% off washing machines, up to 20% off dishwashers, and up to 25% off refrigeration. The only thing more intense than these savings is my voiceover. The Black Friday event, now on at AppliancesDelivered.ie. Looking for new dinner ideas? Why not take the plunge with Irish mussels? They're easy to cook and easy to enjoy. Just add garlic, a dash of chilli and serve with pasta. Pick up in store from the fish counter or in ready-to-cook packs. So go on, flex your muscles. See recipes at boardbia.ie forward slash fish. Off the ball. This is News Talk. Now, welcome back. So, as you know, at this stage, the Keith Andrews Football Show is podcasted and streamed live every Thursday, half past 12. And today he had a brilliant chat with Keith Tracy, former Preston Burnley Irish player. Keith has had uh, real mental health difficulties and was very honest with Keith Andrews this afternoon. Here's how they got on. Connor Clifford's done a good article recently in, in, in an interview. And he was speaking about the pressure of having to have the Louis Vuitton wash bag, having to have, and I remember even going back to my time, the certain type of runner, the certain type of yeah. trainer, there was that little bit of pressure. Was that something that was evident at, at Blackburn? Uh, it was evident, yeah. It passed me over. I'm sure you remember. I had, I was getting uh, called a pike and all sorts, but I lived in the dig, so I only ever come down in a pair of shorts, you know, ready to mm. go into my training gear, so I sort of avoided all that stuff, but it was, yeah, it was evident. I knew... There's probably players before you came to Blackburn, like uh, Jamal Johnson, and yeah. there was people like that to just they go out and bike. Like I bought a Range Rover at 17. I didn't even have a driver's license or anything like it. Mm. And it's just them things that trying to be like the people around you. And yeah, you get like too much too quick. I was at you were sorry you were 18. I went to Blackburn in August 2008. So you would have been 18 then, wouldn't you? Yeah. 18? Maybe, no, maybe 17. Going I don't on know, 18. I'm not going to pretend I can walk out these next numbers. year. So, um, we're born on the same day, remember? Are you 13? Yeah, 13 September, yeah. Oh, right. Yeah, so. Do you remember that? And Carl Robinson was as well. I remember at the time when he was at, at Blackburn as the coach. No, we'd never have tweaked that, that at all, no. Well, it's obviously a few years different, yeah, you were a bit younger. Yeah. Um, so, when I moved there, I was really aware of you as this young Irish lad coming through, and you made, you made the, the comparison of or sorry, a lot of people are making the comparison of the new Damien Dolphin. Mm. So, moved there, and in my first game, we were playing at Upton Park, and I don't know whether you remember this, got brought on at half-time, Vince Corelli, who, to be fair to Vinny, <laughs> struggled with yeah, the, uh, Vince, the yeah. tempo of, of, of the game and came off at half-time. I've never seen anybody have so much cramp yeah. at half-time in a game. His legs could not move at half-time. He was on the floor. Yeah, well, I bet his hair still looked great, didn't it? <laughs> Yeah, looked a million dollars. Um, but then you came on in that game as well. I came on at halftime and then bang. So you're, you're in and around it, straight yeah. from the off, playing. And then that was obviously Paul Ince was the manager. I think he showed a lot of belief in you, but like yeah. things were flying. Yeah. Weren't yeah. they? Things were flying there, but like when you come in, you you obviously only seen me getting into the team, but mm. under Mark Hughes, I was in every squad, travelling everywhere, and you know would never get to the pitch. It was everything but getting onto the pitch, yeah. and when Ince came in, he. Uh, did you play in that game against Everton? Remember the first no, game? No, I saw the day after. Yeah, that was four I, one, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, we were. I think we were losing one away, day. away to Everton, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, uh, first game of the season, and he, I was sitting there, and somebody turned around and said, "Keith, go and warm up," and I was like, He's "Not bringing me <laughs> on, we're losing like in Goodison Park. He ain't bringing me on." And he turned and said, "Keith, come on." I was like. Just making a mistake here. <laughs> I was absolutely panicking. But Take that really? I was panicking because the crowd is so close. Well, like yeah, I yeah. thought if I win in 3-0, there's a chance to bring on, me on and you know, blood me a bit. But yeah. this was, I suppose, yeah, he showed a lot of faith in me there. And I think we, we ended up winning. So that was a great confidence mm-hmm. booster for me. And I remember that West Ham game as well. Do you? Bellers was playing, wasn't he? Yeah. And he was having a go at Lucas Neal about getting tight to me. Yeah, yeah. And he was calling me all sorts of names. Wiley was telling him to get tight, but... Yeah, that was the type of fella Bellers was as well. So you've, you've talked about the, the range of, and I remember that. So I remember coming to the club and hearing loads about you, seeing it then with my own eyes, seeing how good you were, how good you could be. And then I'm looking at you some mornings and I'm thinking, you were out last night or you were out two nights in the bounce. And yeah. then, oh my, I'm, 20, I'm 28 at the time, then going on 28. And look, I've been there. Look, 
mm-hmm. see it. And so there's, there's a fine line between looking at you and thinking, I don't want to be your dad here. I don't want to be yeah. like on you all the time. But then it's a fine line between that and then trying to give you some kind of guidance, some kind of advice. Yeah. And it, it's difficult because you've, you've got all this potential. And I know, I know there was a lot of the senior players trying to yeah. kind of curb you and the Range Rover story. Like, what was the Range Rover story about the lads off the bus? Um, so you get back from an away game. You might, you'll have to fill in the blanks here because I've heard this second tour at hand. Yeah, yeah. And I think Graham Sooners was the manager. Um, no, it must have been. No, it was Mark Hughes was the manager. Sparky, yeah. yeah, so Mark Hughes is the manager. Mm. And... At the end, at the end of the game, you get back to the stadium or the training ground, and the usual t- story is: the staff and the young players get the stuff off the, the bus, yeah. the kit, the the skips, all the rest of it. And as Mark Hughes looks around, you're whizzing past in your Range Rover. <laughs> um, I, w- I honestly don't remember. I, it sounds like something I'd have done, but not. I wouldn't have done it on purpose. I wouldn't have yeah. done. I'm too good for this. I probably, I probably played and taught. I don't have to do it today because yeah, I played. Yeah. Yeah. It would have been something like that, but obviously I, I had that bit of arrogance about me, and people probably rubbed a lot of people up the wrong way at the time. But I think I, it was I more frustration. Know? I don't think it was arrogance. I think it was frustration. I don't think mm. everybody was probably in the same boat as me. Staff members, um, and not just coaching staff. Like the medical staff at Blackburn was quite tight around that time, yeah. and they try and chip in and try and give you that little bit of advice. I think the main thing was frustration because we. Everybody could see yeah. how much quality, how much potential that you had. And it was just a case of just, just curbing that. So, like, Saturday night, what, what would be the drill after the game? Was it literally full blast? Uh, well, Blackburn wasn't really the problem for the drinking. The drinking kicked in Preston when I, when I really, although it was the championship, that was when I really started to kick on. I, I was a big fish at Preston. That was when the drinking started. Preston, oh, sorry, Blackburn was people expected me to do things and I'd always do just enough of what they'd be like like you say you've seen a flash of it and you're like oh gee he is as good as people say but I would never deliver deliver it when I should and why did you think that was? Uh, like when you look back because again when I like when I, I early stages of my career I had really frustrating times and I, drinking culture was massive yeah. in footballs and it wasn't a case of just me it was everybody so it was, it was one of those but like when I look back and in the years that have gone past like I do look in the mirror I do look towards managers I do look towards senior players could they have helped me a little bit more where, where, where do you stand on it? Um, geez, I'd be cockeyed if I was trying to look at people for whose problem it was but <clears throat> mostly I'd look at myself but there's certain things like Phil Brown when he, he was a manager at Preston he didn't help mm. but the, the earliest memory I have of Blackburn is meeting Dominic Matteo and Gary Flickroft yeah. I, I, some Senior players. silly bleeding hamstring injury but I was in the gym and I ended up with them two and there Flicky, Flicky was the, the was captain, captain at the time and he said to me never miss a night out never ever miss a night out because before you know it your career will be over and I took him literally on that mm. obviously I shouldn't have but a fifteen, you know. Do you mean, you mean like team bonding? Is that what he meant? I'm not sure, but I never missed any night out. Now, whether it was drinking, go kart, whatever it was, I was there, and I, it just sort of struck me, and I couldn't deal with the ups and downs of the game. So drinking was always uh, an escape for me, and I was always young enough and fit enough to be able to have a couple of points and get away with it, have a couple of points, get away with it. But it starts, you know, you're born in the candle at both ends. It eventually will come to get you. And, so what happened after that? Oh, when did it? What, you're saying that was really the time. When did it start escalating? Then or what? What happened? Was it just? Uh, it became a constant. Yeah, it became a constant because I was living in between uh, Preston and Blackpool in a place called Lytham. So mm. <clears throat> if I go to Preston, I can drink till you know half one, two o'clock in a studenty place. If I go to Blackpool, I can stay up till whatever time, the next day if I want. Mm. So it was never really. Oh, it's a Tuesday night. I can't go out tonight. I would always go out knowing I have a recovery day the next day, but I'd be stinking a drink the next day with the booze. And yeah, pre- you know, Phil Brown used to. I was getting injections before every game. I wasn't training. I never ever trained at 21. I wouldn't be. On, but again, I seen that with. Remember, Rocky used to do it. He used to not train. He used to be Man Friday. He'd come out and train on Friday, score on a Saturday. Yeah. And they, they were the, Cruz, yeah, yeah. the type of people I was looking up to. And I was like, yeah, I'll do that. I just won't train and I'll play and turn it on and turn Obviously it off. Obviously, that was a different different end of the spectrum. He's mm. whatever he was. Yeah. Late 20s, you're 21. So, like, what, what were you getting injections for? 
Uh, I had a double hernia that they didn't want to operate on because we were in a dog fight at the relegation end. Yeah. So uh, it was just just getting injections, injections, and <laughs> it got to the point where my arse had so many uh, needle points in it that they had to start giving me suppositories. Then seriously, yeah, it was Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday, and I just I wouldn't like my arse was like a dartboard at one stage. <laughs> it was a joke. That was it. I I wasn't big a man enough to say, listen, I'm gonna, I'm not playing today because you'd be down, don't that's, think that. That's there's, there's got to be a duty of care as well when it comes to mm. the, the medical side. And I, I don't know what you felt. I felt that Blackburn as well. That was probably one of the strongest medical yeah. departments in terms of they would stand up for the players' yeah. rights. And I think look. Dave Fever had a lot to do with that. I think yeah. he, he was he knew what he was doing. He was really. He used to ring me mad at home and all. He had that little personal touch, you know. Not not an injury, you know, if I was ill and I was in up in the digs, he would ring me mother and say, listen, it's only a touch of a cold, don't worry about it. Yeah, Blackburn had that little personal touch that was attracted me to him. Speak, speaking of your mum and your family, like when, like, when this was going on at, at Preston in particular, when it was like, you're going out Saturdays or kicking on or midweeks, you know, did they have any idea? Um, I think they knew I was ill, but... What was what was the what else was I going to do? They didn't want me sitting in the house getting depressed. So mm. them saying I was out having a drink, they probably thought, oh, well, everybody's out having a drink. But you know, they they were they never had a footballer as a son before, so they didn't know which way to guide me. And I was telling them everything was all right, and they'd see me on the telly once a month playing half decent or getting an oil and cap, and they'd be like, everything's great. fine. Yeah. And you, you half the time I'd lie to myself in the mirror saying everything's fine you know how can things be wrong if I'm playing for Ireland and playing for Preston and yeah. weekly you know? yeah. and uh, I would have yeah, been in the same stuff. ball I would have been similar to that in the way that you just try to make it sound like it's so and they see you every now and again they speak to you on the phone and they don't really know the full extent yeah. of exactly what you're going through like I, I wanted to knock football in the head when I was 21, 20, 22, 23 I'd say yeah. I nearly went to America, nearly went on a um, scholarship to, to New York and go and play over there because I'd had enough of it yeah. I'd had enough of the culture I'd had enough of the way I was getting treated by Wolves at the time yeah. and I've said to you, well, like just wasn't right for me, just just totally fell out of love with, with football didn't even want to train it was yeah. a horrible position to be in did you ever, did you ever get to that level? Many, many times. Like even when things were going well, and I scored a goal, I'd wake up the next morning and go, "I can't be bothered doing this." Mm. And I'm sure for people who've never played the game professionally, must listen to that and go, "What hell How, can why? you feel like yeah. that?" But it's it's the ups and downs of it. It's honestly, it's it. You can't. I'm sure you understand it, but people just don't understand how hard it is mm. to do that. And you know, imagine stacking a shelf in Tesco and somebody standing behind you saying, "You know." with the awards that you use to us. It's not just, you know, the normal F and the Jeff and it's, most of it gets personal, you know. Anything that's in the media that's personal mm. will be brought up in yeah. the crowd and, you know, it's just, a, it's not really nice. And When did the depression kick in? Like, I know you've spoke about that in the last couple of years, but and at the time you didn't, you were saying it's been, you've had it for years yeah. on and off and like, what, like when, when you look back now, when do you think it started or what started it? Um. In the, in the nicest possible way, what started was probably me and my wife, my me, me wife to be at the time, and I was I was floating through life in England, you know, I was just playing games. Eventually, things weren't going well for me at Barnsley, and I, ju I didn't have the bite between my teeth to get myself going again. I I couldn't kickstart myself, and my wife and the kids were at home. I was like, this just isn't weighing up here for me. The pro the cons were outweighing the pros all of a sudden, and I just I actually we were playing Preston at home and in. in uh, Sorry, in deep there. So I was allowed to stay at home on Christmas Day. And I woke up Christmas, uh, sorry, Boxing Day, and there was blood all over the, the sitting room floor. Like, and the taxi driver who was coming to get me to bring me to the game was like, he wanted to ring me, man, that was like blood. And I got up and got dressed, got cleaned myself up, and went to do the warm up. And I, as I, he put me on the bench, thank God, I thought it was actually due to play. As, as I turned, we were doing little sprints, and as I turned to sprint, the stadium just started to turn black and black. I couldn't see. And I made some excuse that I had a flu or something and went in. And I was, he told me to sit behind the bench. Mm. And I rang my wife like on the slide behind the bench, and that was it. We went home that day. I, I didn't even tell the club. They actually sent me letters six months later saying, uh, you've been sacked and blah, blah, blah. But this was six months ago. And that's, but that's... 
the life of a footballer. It's up and down and up and down. Uh, it they, wasn't an easy they didn't game. help you at all, though, to try and deal with that. Or because no. there's a lot, there's a lot made as well about the PFA. Now, I have, I don't want to be too critical of them, but I think they're very reactive. They're not proactive. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so if something comes out, they'll jump on that. Yeah. Did they do anything to try and help? Um, not. S- it was somebody from the PFA. Clark Carlisle tried to help me a lot, but it wasn't in the PFA capacity, if you know what I mean. It was as a mate because I played with him at uh, Burnley and he was coming over to Preston at the time. And I, I see myself and Clarky a lot now. So the only person I would listen to was Clarky, mm-hmm. and he had a great way about him. He was really, such a nice fella and the way he spoke to me really opened my eyes, but there was still a little blip mm-hmm. after Clarky that I had to get over. And I think you really have to Re, you have to hit that rock bottom and you have to either say am I going to get straight and keep going or am I just going to try and live my life and I, I remember do you ever play with Wayne Henderson? Yes. I remember I he, he came into my house and lit him crying one day after a Preston game he was on the bench and he, he just slammed a whiskey bottle down and he's like I don't think I'll be able to pick my kids up when they're born he hasn't got any kids but because his back was so bad he started sobbing and I was like this is a grown man crying like Picking your kids up is more important than playing a game of football to me, and I always will be. So, when I seen Hendo doing that, I was thinking and thinking, if I keep drinking and keep playing here, and I, cu- I couldn't stop the drinking at the time, so I kept drinking and playing, but eventually I got to a good enough place where, you know, I'm, I don't I haven't drank since November now, so... So you're nearly a year off it. Nearly a year off it, yeah, but Christmas is coming up, so who knows? <laughs> no, everything's... I'm, this is three years of therapy later, you know, to get all this stuff out and... Like I say, I like talking about it now because I think it's a lot of people need to you. hear this. Yeah, well, did you, did you know any of the stuff no, when you went over? No, it's no, it's no. all rose and you're going to be... First and foremost, it's got to help you. Like, it's got it's to be beneficial for you. And I think, like, the, I read that article a few weeks ago yeah. in the Herald and I was, honestly, I felt so bad. I felt so bad that I should have done more, I could have done more to try and help you. When, when I was at Blackburn but then don't realise to the extent and then you go off and you're playing at you're playing at Burnley you're playing at Preston and obviously I don't I'm not seeing you on a daily yeah. basis then well, that, that's not that's not like, although I was a child I, I wasn't nobody it's nobody's duty to mind me there when we're on the football pitch and but that was it I, what did we train from half ten till half twelve and I'd be back in my house at half twelve and you know what two and a half grand a week sitting in the house what are you going to do at mm. 17, 18? There's only one thing on my mind. And um, unfortunately, it was on my mind till I was a lot older to reverse what I'd done to my body. What's the plan now? So is it a constant battle to try and t- stay on top of this with the, the people you have around now, good people? You've just mentioned your wife, you just had a baby as well. Uh, it's not a battle anymore. Um, at the start, it was a battle, but... At the start, I didn't realise I was trying to give up drink. I thought I was just, oh, I'll give it two weeks if I can. And, you know, you start to stretch it and stretch it and stretch it. And before I knew it, I'm sitting here, I'm nearly a year off and I have no no ambition to go back to it at all. No ambition to go back to dream. What about football? Uh, if you not ask, playing at the moment, eh? Not playing at the moment, but... <sighs> if you put that in a box, like you were saying, and you're kind of saying, that's just not important. Not, not important anywhere not, near as much we, as the the family side of things and what you want to do yeah well I, like you say we're only we only had a, a little boy two weeks ago so giving football another tough I, I would love to play but I'd love to play for a like, uh, Sherry Street or East Wall just an, an amateur thing and just to enjoy just have a bit of laugh again and not you know people going oh, your touch was poor there or you should have pressed there it's just forget the tactics and have a game of football like, you remember enjoy. the last time you played football and you enjoyed it Uh I don't think I've ever enjoyed a professional game of football. It's more... You're, you're even, di- even Ireland? Even Ireland was... It was more nerve-wracking to think what could go wrong rather than what could I actually go and achieve here. It was, right, just keep it steady, just don't do anything stupid here, Keith. And that's always what I wanted to do, was just, right, don't do anything stupid rather than actually going and Whereas your on. game is the total opposite. Right? You, you yeah. had the attributes to, to be the game-changer. You were the, like... Yeah, the duff, you know, like with those type of qualities. So, like, to, to imagine that you were even thinking that kind of the game, because if I was with you and you were playing regular, I'd be like literally wanting to get you the ball mm. to win us games. But you were thinking, yeah. it's down to anything wrong. Well, I, I did a lot of that could have been to do a trap as well. He was that way minded, especially mm. with his wingers. He didn't want to leave the defensive side to uh, to expose. But 
Yeah, I was always like that. I was always, and I know when I come on against Argentina, I I done okay. I went past Abelet a few times, but people made a big thing about that. Like, oh, you just skinned Abelet at the time. He was an aging man, and I was coming into my prime, and well, my prime what was like twenty one or something. Mm. But yeah, it did turn out to be my prime, didn't it? Yeah, well, nah. uh, I don't think I enjoyed it. I actually get the first thing I did after that game was go down and give my granddad my jersey because it was his birthday and he was down in Rings End. So I, I literally I walked from the Aviva to just like I did today, back down <laughs> to uh, my granddad and gave him the jersey. And it was more, I was really proud to be able to give him my jersey rather than like enjoying the game of football itself. I was, did you, did you enjoy football games? Yeah, I did, yeah. Yeah? yeah. You seem surprised. I did, and you I were definitely enjoyed it. was a very angry it. man on, on the pitch you were. Yeah, that's the I way I played. The, yeah. That's the way I played. I was really highly strung and I was mm. really, you'd probably testify to this, few other lads have said, I was always moaning and shouting and screaming. And, yeah. But mm. I, I, I loved that battle side of it. Whereas yeah. I had different, I'm saying I had different qualities to you. So what, I felt like that side of my game would get the best out of you yeah. if I got you at it and was giving you the ball and scrapping the midfield and doing, doing certain things. Depends yeah. what club I was at. But yeah, I definitely enjoyed it. And with, with Ireland, I was just, loved every second of it. Yeah, well, don't get me wrong. I was, I was extremely proud and all that stuff. I was delighted to do it. But did I actually enjoy the game? No, particularly. You know, it was. So when you look back now, where, where would you, where would you change it? What point do you think? Then I should have changed it. So again, like certain parallels. I spoke to you about. I was willing to give up football. Didn't like it. I had to get out of Wolverhampton. I went to Hull. Hated Hull. I yeah. felt like I was living in Russia. It was like <laughs> the far end of the. Leading earth, it was ridiculous. So it wasn't until I went to MK Dons that I actually fell back in love with football again. You were, you were speaking about I just want to go and enjoy football. That's where I started to enjoy football yeah. again, and it was from then. Whereas could have easily, you know, if that didn't go well, just yeah. fall out. And what was I then? I was twenty-five, maybe. Well, I think that happened to me at uh, Preston to a certain extent, but even when I left Blackburn, do you remember when I, I crashed my car? Mm. You were you were training that day, yeah. right? And Sam Allardyce wouldn't even speak to me. He sent me in, and uh, Doctor Batty had to break me to know as he'd mm. get out and blah de blah. But <sighs> some of the things that went on, like behind the scenes, Irish young Irish fifteen year old will never know these things. And like, how do you how do you speak? There's nobody there. Like remember our own hands used to yeah. do, but there's nobody there. And I think there is a real need for that. A, there is a need for somebody to speak to them and just to advise. Say, them. listen, if if you don't, if you're not the next Damien Duff. Mm. Don't worry about it. Right? Like, there's somebody going into your mind at 13 saying, this fella's going to be the next name in Duff. There's going to be millions. Like, I remember my ma looking at houses out in Bray and like, that's the sort of pressure that's getting thrown on you. Like, I'm inverting you now. Like, they weren't doing it on purpose, but these little things are just on your back and you're like, I'm trying to just have a game of football here. And it goes out of it. The fun goes out of it with, with the professionalism. Mm. Listen, we could go on talking about this forever. I'm yeah. glad you're looking well. I'm glad things are going well in terms of being off the drink. Stay strong, right? Yeah, of course. It's been a pleasure. Off the ball on News Talk. Transport Minister Shane Ross is proposing to introduce legislation that would see speeding fines linked to how fast a motorist is actually travelling at the time that they were caught speeding. If you've got somebody who's doing 100